Thank you, everybody. Uh, my name is Pyle Shan. I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Educational Studies at USC College of Education. And today I'm going to talk to you about the burden and hope of girls' education. We'll start here with this quote, if you educate a girl, you educate a nation. This is a quote and an assumption that underlies most international, national, and individual efforts aimed towards girls' education and empowerment. But what does this quote mean? And importantly, what does education and empowerment look like in the lives of girls who are the recipients of many international, national, and individual programs and policies aimed at educating girls? In my research, I seek to explore these issues of education, empowerment, and social change in the lives of girls who are going to school in India. And to do so, I'm going to tell you the story of two girls. Rekha, who is here on your left, and Lepa on your right. Both, I met both Rekha and Lepa when I was, uh, when they were middle school students at a residential school, and I've been working with them over the past eight years. Lepa was a charismatic girl. She was a natural leader at the school, and she, was, she academically excelled. She comes from a family where her sister, her older sister, had committed suicide because she was forced to remain in an arranged marriage where she was abused. Her father died when she was very young, leaving her mother a widow and in deep poverty who had to work as a landless laborer on farms. And her brother was a truck driver. Fast forward two years to when Rika has graduated from the uh, middle school and I find her having dropped out of school and working, she was the first of her cohort to actually get a job and she's working as a doctor's assistant. Fast forward two years from there, Rekha is now 16, and again I find her in her in-law's home, having just been married and having a four-month-old daughter. Now we turn to Lata. Lata was also a very charismatic and intelligent and persistent girl. When I met her at the middle school, she was actually in eighth grade. She had already completed the middle school, but was using the middle school as kind of a hostel facility for her to be able to attend a local girls' high school. This was not only unusual at the school, but unusual within the community. She comes from a family like Rekha's, whose parents are illiterate. Her parents are laborers on a farm, and her father drives a three-wheeled taxi in the evenings. She has two brothers who attend the local high school nearby. And she has two younger sisters who are not in school. Fast forward two years, and Rekha is in high school, and she's very much looking forward to attending college. She, unlike most girls at her age, she is not engaged at this point, and she has actually been able to successfully negotiate with her parents to delay her engagement so that she can finish high school. Fast forward two more years, and we find Rekha in her first year of college. At this point, she is engaged, but she is not married, which is very uncommon. She was actually able to successfully negotiate with her in-laws to allow her to delay her marriage so that she could continue to school. In my research, when I look at issues related to education and empowerment, I do not think of education as being either either disempowering or empowering. Instead, I, look to, I like to look at education as this larger complex process that goes beyond just the individual, but actually looks at the ways education impacts not girls, only girls' lives, but the lives of their families and also the lives of their community. To understand this complexity, we'll go back to Rekha and Lepa. When I met Rekha last, I asked her to reflect upon her circumstances. While she lamented that she was no longer in school, she looked me in the eye and she said, this is my life right now and this is the way that it has to be. But this is not going to be the life of my daughter. For my daughter to live the life that I dream of, this is what I have to do. When I was speaking to Lata and her parents, I learned that in order for Lata to continue on to school, to continue into middle school, and high school and beyond. There was significant personal, there was significant family sacrifice that happened. I mentioned her two sisters who were not in school. Her sisters had to drop out of school 
to work on the farms and bring in uh, income, and to t attend to all of the household and domestic labor that Rekha, as the eldest child of the family, were supposed to attend to. So from Rekha's and, and Lata's stories, we learn that when you think about educating a girl and uh, automatically educating a nation, we have to go beyond the individual. And we have to look at education and empowerment and social change as complex processes that are one, relational, right, are dependent upon the relations between girls, their families, and their communities, but also two, intergenerational, right? These are processes that are very slow moving, that are complex, and that are long term. So I like to complicate this a little bit through my research. Thank you very much. <laughs>